Shalom. I'd like to start this lesson by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Racha Kodash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well and taught me just 100% truth. Shalom to the Akim and the Akwaf listening in today. <gasps> Excuse me. <clears throat> I'm back at you with another lesson entitled I Come as a Thief in the Night. And who is it that's coming as a thief in the night? That's Yahweh Shai, man. And why is he coming as a thief in the night? That's because, you know, you've got the population, the majority of the population in that mirth spirit, you know, living their best life, having all their fun, which, you know, when you translate fun into uh, Italian, it translates to divertimento, you know? So when you're out there having fun, we're not saying you shouldn't have any fun in this thing, man, because, you know, ultimately, you don't want to make this truth a burden to you. But, therefore, be concerned if you're having too much fun, you know? And why is that? Because we know that the day of the Lord cometh as a thief in the night, man. All right? And it's going to catch a lot of people off guard, okay? So those people... That desire the day of the Lord as well, you know, what benefit is it to you, man? You know, if you're if you're not if you're not diligently seeking Yahweh Ba Shem Yahweh Shai, while she can, if you're not locked into this truth, then why are you desire desiring the end of the uh, you know the day of the Lord? You know, so let's start off here in uh, Amos chapter five, verse eighteen, and it reads, Woe unto you that, that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? Why, why, why is he asking that? Because the day of the Lord is darkness and not light, you know? Because a lot of you, uh, you Christians believe there's going to be a rapture and, and you know, the Lord, he's going to save you. Um, you know, he's just going to, you know, rapture the, 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 the body of believers, you know, of all nations, you know, Gentiles included, as in the, the heathen nations. And then, you know, you just and then, you know, you guys believe some crazy doctrine, man. But look, even even the elect are gonna be scared during those times, but they're still gonna be praising Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. We've got an example of that in the book of Revelation. Uh, I believe it's in chapter eleven. Is it 11 and 13? No, it's not that one. Bear me a second. Might be... And there's a scripture where it says, uh, you know... Let me try and find it. Bear with me. Here's Revelation 11. Uh, that's I'm reading the wrong chapter. So I'm lucky. <laughs> there we go. All right. Revelation 11 verse 13. And the same hour was there a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell. And in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand. And the remnant, who's the remnant? The elect, were affrighted and gave glory to the power of heaven, man. So, you know, you guys believe this bugged out doctrine that somehow so-called Jesus Christ is going to come rapture his people and he ain't going to... And you ain't going to go through no trials and tribulations. And that's it. And you're just going to enter into the kingdom of heaven. It don't work like that, man. But guess what? For you Christians that believe that, 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 that foolish doctrine, the day of the Lord is definitely going to come onto you as a thief in the night, man. And that's gonna, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a terrible day for you, furthermore. You know, back to Amos chapter 5, verse 19. As if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him, or went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall and a serpent bit him. You know, so basically what that, the picture is trying to paint here is that there's going to be danger no matter where you turn, man. No matter where you go, you're going to be met by danger. 
So long story short, ain't no one gonna escape the judgment of Yahweh Ba Hashem Yahweh Shai. It doesn't matter how deep that bunker is, or doesn't matter how far into space you go, or what sort of deserted rainforest or mountain top that you might go onto. Look, you are not escaping the judgment of Yahweh Ba Hashem Yahweh Shai. Point back, point blank. Period, man. Amos chapter five verse twenty. Shall the day shall not the day of the Lord Yahweh Ba Hashem Yahweh Shai be darkness and not light? even very dark and no brightness in it, you know, because it's going to be a terrible day, man. You know, they ain't going to be, you ain't going to be in that mirth spirit in that day. You know, you're going to be wishing that you hearkened onto the, onto the, 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 the Lord's mouthpiece, man. And who are those? The prophets who've been on the highways and byways and the various streaming platforms telling you of these things, you know, warning you that that great day of judgment is coming, man. But you guys, we're too distracted by the things of the world, man. You know, we got too caught up in the cares of the world. All right. You know, so let's go to uh, let's go to Luke, Saint Luke, chapter twenty-one. We'll start at. Start at verse 33, yeah? Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. So, you know, this is why it would be a foolish thing for you not to listen to the words, not to hearken unto the words of Yahweh Ba Hashem Yahweh Shai. And where can you find that? You can find that within these scriptures, man. And, and, you know, the true men of the Lord breaking it down to you. You know, because these words ain't going to pass away. These words, you know, really and truly... Everything that's going on around the world, everything that's going on full stop, is all is all is all coming out of the scriptures, man. You know? Doesn't it say in Isaiah fifty five that that you know his word will not return unto him void? And it's gonna accomplish everything that it's said to accomplish. Let's get let's get Isaiah fifty five real quick. Verse 11, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. So guess what? If the Lord says this world is going out by fire, well then guess what? It's going out by fire, man. If the Heavenly Father says there's going to be plagues, and there's going to be famines, and there's going to be, there's going to be great, you know, there's going to be great death. You know, and there's going to be division. Then you best count on those words, man. Because it says here, again, Isaiah 55 and 11. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. But it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. All right. So this is why we've got to hearken unto the voice of the Heavenly Father, man. Because really and truly, this is the only way that we're going to uh, uh, escape the perils. Okay? So let's go back to Luke 21, verse 34. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life. And so that day come upon you unawares. You know? Because a lot of these people, they're too busy caught up trying to live for the world man you know following the latest trends and 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 you know trying to look the best on social media and so on and so forth man so that that day of the lord is going to come upon them um unawares you know verse 35 for as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the earth on the face of the whole earth okay so so you know this mirth spirit is, 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 is pretty much a snare, man, for you heathens and you wicked two-thirds Israelites, you know? Because that day, that day of the Lord is going to come upon you uh, um, at unawares, man, as well as you've got the prophets, you know, the men of the Lord, who are basically measuring the times diligently, pursuing to Second Ezra 9 and 1. And how are we doing that? We're doing that by way of the prophecies, man. We know that certain things can't happen, 
until uh, 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 a particular prophecy happens, man. Like we know Jacob's trouble can't happen in its full force until um, um, the prophecy of the grain of rice is fulfilled. You know, pursuant to Revelation chapter 13 and 16 on down, you know. So we know that World War Three isn't going to be happening next week, man, or tomorrow or next month. Why? Because they haven't made that grain of rice mandatory yet, you know. But it does say in Matthew 24 that there shall be wars and rumours of wars. And we're hearing about these rumours of wars, man, a lot more. We're hearing about rumours of wars now more than ever, man, a lot more now. More than we ever have, alright? So these are the signs, okay? But you see, if you're aware of the signs, then the day of the Lord will not come on to you as a thief in the night, alright? That's why it says in Ezekiel 3 and 17 that I have set thee a watchman, alright? And who are the watchmen? Those, those, are, those are the men of the Lord, man. The, the, the prophets that are, that are edifying the sheep and breaking down the scriptures and let you know the times that we're in, alright? Luke 21, verse 36. Watch ye therefore, and pray always, that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. And that's what we're doing now, man. We're, we're you know, we're, we're, we're watching, and we're praying always, you know, because we, we don't want to die the death of the wicked, man. We've read the scriptures, we understand the, the, the plagues that's about, to bev uh, that's about to befall this place, man. And we're hoping that we can get that thawa, that mark of exemption, so that we don't have to uh, taste death full stop. Even though, you know, some of us are going to have to die for this truth, but we don't want to die the death of the wicked, man. All right? We don't want to go out the way the wicked is about to go out. You wicked two-third Israelites and you heathen nations, man. Let's go to Matthew chapter 16. Uh, we'll start at verse 2. We'll start at verse 1. The Pharisees, also with the Sadducees, came and tempting, desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven. Verse 2. And he answered, them and he answered and said unto them, When it is evening, ye say, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. O ye hypocrites! Ye can dis discern the face of the sky, but cannot. But can ye not discern the signs of the times? You know. So with all these prophecies popping off right now, you wicked two third Israelites, you still can't wake up to the times that we're in, man. You know. You still, you're still in that Murph spirit, trying to live your best life, trying to achieve your goals here on this side, man. Trying to build up your riches and your, your comfortability here on this side, man. Yet the scriptures tells us this is not our rest. So what are you doing, you know? And ultimately, it's all vanity, man. If you go to the book of Ecclesiastes, uh, I forget which chapter. But, you know, saying that basically all our earthly works are just all vanity, you know? The only thing we benefit from, really, is doing the work of the Heavenly Father, you know? But obviously, you guys don't see that. Because why? Isaiah 29 and 10... For the Lord have poured a spirit out upon you, the spirit of deep sleep, and have closed your eyes. The, the prophets and your rulers, the seers, have he uncovered. Have he, so the seers have he covered, you know. So you guys, you want to believe your, 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 your false teachers, you know. You want to you just go and hear the words that comfort you, man. You don't want to come and hear the truth of the scriptures. And that's why you lots are going to get jacked up, man. Point blank, period. You know, let's go to uh, let's go to First uh, Corinthians chapter two. Verse ten. But Yahweh. No, hold on. Let's start at verse twelve. First Corinthians. Chapter 2, verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of the Most High, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of the Most High. All right? So we're not given the spirit of the world, man. You know? So, and that's why 
That's why those who have, who have been given the spirit of the world, they can't fully grasp or come to grips with what the men of the Lord are saying, man, when we're breaking down these scriptures because the Heavenly Father has put that deep slumber upon them, man. All right? Because, hey, not everyone can be saved, man. Because then who, who's going to be left to get jacked up and to receive the plagues that, that's written in this book? All right? So the Heavenly Father, he's not going to open everyone's eyes, just the elect, the remnant. Okay? Verse 13, uh, 1 Corinthians 2, verse 13, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Spirit teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. So, you know, the words that we speak, we're taught through the Racha Kodash, man. You know, we, we learn these things through the Holy Spirit. We're not, we're not taught the things of man, you know, going into a, into a theological cemetery, as Elder Apostle Taha likes to refer to them. You know, just just regurgitating all the all the all the nonsense that's been taught to us, man. You know, we we learn these things through the spirit. You know, we've got our spiritual teachers who are the elders and apostles of Great Millstone on downwards. All right. Verse fourteen. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of the Most High. For they are foolishness unto him. When you tell, that's why, you know, you've got Volcab Malone scoffing at the fact that, you know, one, one man of the Lord is going to be able to, to, to throw a tank, man. When really that's, that's, that's nothing, you know. Doesn't, it, doesn't Yahweh Shai say that greater acts than, 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 than I will ye do? You know? And, and you know... Let's go, let's go to the book of John real quick. Let's go to the book of St. John real quick. I'm going to start at 21 and 25. John 21 and 25. And there are also many other things which Yahweh Shai did, the which, if they should be written <laughs> every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written therein, you know. But we, we know some of the acts of Yahweh Shai, you know, when he walked on water, when he multiplied the fishes and the bread so that, you know, all the congregation could eat, when he healed the sick. He disappeared when he shapeshifted. You know, we've got, we've got all these accounts in the scriptures, man. All right. Let's quickly read Acts uh, chapter 1, verse 8. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth, man. So we're going to receive that power, guys. All right. And let's just go to uh, John 14 and 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my father, you know. But you see, this knowledge is, is foolishness to the natural man, you know, the natural man, he can't, he can't, um, 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 what's the word, he can't, he can't fathom, he can't interpret the things of the spirit, all right, like the way the true men of the Lord, the elect, the hopeful elect can, all right, so let's go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, but the natural man, Receiveth not the things of the Spirit of the Most High, for they are foolishness unto him. So, you know, going back to throwing a tank and, and you know, being able to teleport, being able to disappear, to shapeshift, that's foolishness to the natural man. Why? Because the natural man only sees that in the Marvel films. So he's writing that off as, 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 um, as fiction, you know. Or is it non-fiction? You get what I'm trying to say, Right. He's, he's, just, he's disregarding it, man. Nah, you only see that, that in the movies. You only see that in the cinema. He's not thinking that 
that the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Ba Hashem, Yahweh Shai, is about to bestow that power on his men. Again, 1 Corinthians 2 and 14, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of the Most High, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned, man. The Most High, he's turned off their, their spiritual eye, man. You know, they, they can't see the things... Uh, that's why they can't even see the times that we're in right now, man. And that's why the day of the Lord is going to come upon them as a thief in the night. All right. Let's go to the book of Jeremiah. Chapter 11. Verse 14. Therefore, pray not thou for this people, neither lift up a cry or prayer for them. For I will not hear them in the time that they cry unto me for their trouble. You know, because they had this time to seek the Lord whilst he may be found, man. But they was too busy in that mirth spirit, man. Fun, divertimental, living their best life, you know. Pleasing the flesh and not doing the things to please the heavenly father, man. You know, so they're going to get caught off guard when Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai makes his presence very, very felt on the planet Earth when he's bringing forth that, 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 that judgment, man, that harsh judgment. But we know that judgment goes out every day, pursuing to, uh, is it Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 5? All right, let's go over to the Apocrypha. Let's go to uh, Second Ezra, chapter eight, verse fifty. For many great miseries shall be done to them in the latter time, and when the latter times now shall dwell in the world, because they have walked in great pride. You know, all these people are full of pride, man. When I mean, really and truly, um, uh, um. These guys have no reason to be prideful, man. Doesn't it say in the book of Proverbs that pride cometh before a fool? You know, so the, the Heavenly Father, he's going to send his son, Yahweh Shai. He's going to send his son down at the height of pride. So what does that mean? That means that judgment is going to be exceeding great, man. That means that judgment is going to be exceeding great. All right? Because he's coming at the height of pride, man. Right when you guys think you've got it all figured out, that's when the Heavenly Father, you're going to bring that wrath upon you, man. Second Ezra 8, verse 51. But understand thou for thyself, and seek out the glory for such as be like thee. So this is the time to be seeking the Heavenly Father, man. Verse 52. For unto you is paradise opened. The tree of life is planted. The time is come. The, sorry. The time to come is prepared. Plenteousness is made ready. We're going to inherit many blessings, man. When Yahweh Shah returns. A city is builded. And rest is allowed. Yeah. Perfect goodness and wisdom. Which is going into the kingdom of heaven, man. You know, we're going to. We're, we're laboring in this truth right now. And, you know, so now's not the time to rest, man. But once we get into that kingdom of heaven, we're really going to rest, you know. Because we, we, we would have, you know, the work would have been completed. You know, we would have done the work of the Lord, man. There's, not, there's no more to do. But, but you heathens ain't going to be resting, man. Especially you Edomites. There's going to be continual slavery. There's going to be continual employment for you heathen nations, man. And the only time you're going to get rest is on Sabbath. That's the only time you're going to be resting, man. So you're going to you're going to be yearning for that for that new moon, you know, because <laughs> that's what the Sabbath is, you know. Just go to Jeremiah chapter 15, uh, verse 6. Thou hast forsaken me, saith the Lord, Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai. Thou art gone backward. And who's he talking about here? He's talking about you wicked two-third Israelites, man. Who don't want to wake up to this truth. Who don't want to hearken unto the men of the Lord. Who are what? That's, that's the Heavenly Father's mouthpiece, man. Because you guys don't have the secrets of the Heavenly Father. 
It says in Amos 3 and 7, Surely the Most High will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophet. Yeah, you guys, what have you guys done to the prophets in the past, man? You guys have murdered the prophets. You know, you've cast away the prophets. Because you want to hear the soothe sayings. You want to hear the sweet things, man. And even now, you're still rejecting the, uh, uh, the words that the prophets are speaking unto you, man. Well, guess what? Ultimately, that means you're rejecting the words of the Heavenly Father. Doesn't it say in Luke 1 and 70 that the, that the prophets are the Heavenly Father's mouthpiece? You know, so if you don't want to hearken unto the true men of the Lord, then you basically, you, 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 you're basically rejecting Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, man. And that, that, that ain't going to end out too good for you, you know? Just keeping it real, man. Because we, we know that your, your wooden stone ain't going to save you, man. It reads in Isaiah 2 that, you know, they cast away their wooden silver, their silver and their gold to the, to the moles and to the bats. You know, your riches, your false philosophies, your false doctrines, they're not going to save you in that day, man. The only thing that will save you is the true understanding of the scriptures and calling out on the names of Yahweh Ba Hashem, Yahweh Shai, man. All right. Uh, Jeremiah 15, uh, let's start at verse 6 again. Thou hast forsaken me, saith Yahweh. Thou art gone backwards. Therefore will I stretch out my hand against thee and destroy thee. I am weary with repenting. And I will fan them with a, a fan in the gates of the land. I will bereave them of children. I will destroy my people since they return not from their ways, you know. So you guys, you guys don't want to return uh, 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 from your wickedness, man. If we left it up to the two thirds wicked Israelites, you guys would, would basically want to dwell in this wicked society forever, man. You wouldn't want this place to be destroyed because you can do your, your filthiness here. You can make your riches here. And you, you feel like the Heavenly Father is a passive power and he ain't doing nothing, man. Or you've been deceived by that Christianity doctrine where, you know, all you have to do is call on the name JC and you've been saved. And that's it, man. But you guys don't even know what you're saved from. When you tell them that there's going to be a nuclear destruction that's going to wipe out uh, the daughter of Babylon, a.k.a. America, and there's going to be nuclear missiles hit across various other lands on the earth, and you told them that that comes out of the scriptures, you know, you're Christians, you told them that comes out of the scriptures, they're looking at you like, what? What scripture is that? My pastor never brought that down to me. You know, they have no clue what's going on. All right? They don't understand that all these things going on around the world is Bible prophecy, man. Yet they want to tell you, pray for the world or some nonsense like pray for Ukraine, you know. But it's the Heavenly Father that's bringing, these, that's bringing forth this judgment. It says in the book of Amos, shall there be evil done in the city and the Lord have not done it? Doesn't it say in Isaiah 45 and 7 that the Lord controls the good and the evil? He makes peace and creates evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Doesn't it say in Deuteronomy 32 and 39 that I kill, I make alive, I heal and I wound. And that there is no power besides me. <laughs> you guys really don't know the power that you're dealing with, man. But all praises to Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai that he's opened up my eyes, man. And those of you that are watching this video... And, 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 you know, believe in the words that you're hearing. Okay. Let's go to the book of Revelation. Chapter 16. Uh, verse 15. And this is Yahweh Shai speaking. Red letter. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments. Lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And how do you keep your garments? Let's go to Revelation chapter 1. Verse 3. Blessed is he that readeth. And they that hear the words of this prophecy. And keep those things which are written therein. For the time is at hand. You know so. But us gaining more wisdom, knowledge and understanding is us clothing ourselves with this garment of truth, man. You know, the garment of, of, of understanding, you know, so that Lord willing, we have the chance that we may be saved, man. If we endure until the very end. All right. 
And you know, you two thirds wicked Israelites that thought you had it all, all figured out and thought you knew, you know, oh yeah, uh, 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 oh my God, he's, he's all just love, you know, and, and that's it. Well, guess what? That same God, you're going to be cursing out, man, when, 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 when uh, uh, the judgment starts to hit you, man. Because it's going to be exceedingly great. It's going to be, you're going to be in such anguish that you, you're, you know, you're going to be blaspheming the names of the Heavenly Father because of the, the calamity, the pure hell that he's putting you through, man. Revelation 16 verse 21. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent. And what's that going into? That's going into those nuclear missiles, man, hitting, pelting uh, um, um, the various lands on the earth but mainly America, which is going to be completely obliterated, man, never to be inhabited again, all right? And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent, and men blasphemed God because of the, pl the plague of the hail, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. So you guys are literally going to be cursing out the Heavenly Father, man, because he's putting you through that shit. Not knowing that really and truly, you're completely deserving of all the calamity that the Heavenly Father's putting you through, man. Because he had his men out here trying to teach you the truth, trying to open up your eyes. But you scoffed, man. You were still in that mirth spirit. You were still in that living your best life spirit, man. You know? And now the Heavenly Father, he's just going to jack you up, man. He's just going to jack you up. That's why... We can't be too attached to the things of the world. Anyways, with that being said, I say shalom.